Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe Show and Tell. My name is Ed Piscor. My name is Jim Rugg. Jim Rugg, printing in color is a fickle mistress, man. <laughs> yes, it is. When you project these pixels on a screen, on a black screen, using red, blue, and green pixels, and then translating that stuff you see on screen onto a white piece of paper with cyan, magenta, and yellow inks. Pretty dicey. The difference is almost impossible to explain. Uh, you can see it if you use Photoshop. Sometimes they'll sort of show you colors that won't translate and what the translation will be, and it's often very, very different. And just the fact that what you're seeing on the monitor might not be see what I'm seeing on my monitor. That's true, too. A lot of calibration tools out there to try to adjust this, but it's... It's kind of a crapshoot. It's the reason we have proofs made, uh, you know, because there really is no substitute for actually printing it and seeing it on paper, because even the papers make a difference. And even the print, the machines make a difference, man. Yes. You might, be, you might be too generous in your fickle mistress. <laughs> <laughs> so many, many, many years ago, man, there was a company that sort of like popped up out of nowhere to try to address these issues. I don't know the history of the company, but they're pa it's called Pantone. Mm -hmm. they created, still, still around today. They created a standard system uh, where they're sort of promise. They, they all but promise because we can't promise anything in this world because you give somebody a guarantee, you will get your ass sued tomorrow. But this is about the best we got, man. It, and it's a long accepted system that basically every professional industry uses, man, for the colors on your little action figures to pe posters, to the color of uh, the red on your Nike Air Jordans, man. Pantone gets a piece of that. But here's the thing, they hold a monopoly in this. They are the accepted standard. There's not a competitor in this field for them. So if you wanna get your hands on one of those Pantone swatch books so that you have perfect color, color that looks exactly the way it looks on that page, and you, if you want that to translate into your final product, you're gonna pay a couple dollars, man, for that fucking swatch book. Somewhere in the upwards of one to five hundred dollars sometimes for these things. Yeah, and these are just tiny little collections of tiny little squares of color. And that has its own pitfalls. Because when you're looking at a half inch square of color and imagining that filling up an entire page or your whole vision, it's very different whenever that's a dominant color versus that's one little square next to two or three thousand other little squares of color on white. And let's not even get into being corrupted by choice when you have a big thick swatch book and you have say 300 reds to choose from. <laughs> so on this so on this show and tell we're gonna get into Eddie P's Pantone hack cost you ten dollars man to get you about 15 solid colors of the most important colors of the rainbow, man. And it's much more accessible than you guys might think, man. Can we go put these under the microscope? Yes, let's. So Jim, I had the opportunity to uh, collaborate with my favorite rap group ever, man. Public Enemy, man. Like when I was doing Hip Hop Family Tree, I got a lot of offers to draw a lot of album covers for some whack <laughs> garbage artists, man. Public Enemy is my favorite group, and when Chuck D came a call in and asked if uh, I wanted to do some toy designs, I couldn't let anybody else do it, man. So don't tell him, man, but I would have done it for free. <laughs> <laughs> and the cool thing about it was that, uh, you know, money was being spent. There were, these aren't like uh, some sort of like laser designed, you know, 3D printed items. Like these were hand sculpted by, by a dude out in Japan, man. And it was my Japanese publisher who put this together. But I had the opportunity to work with Pantone colors, man. And that was important to me because it's not like I'm gonna get the opportunity to design public enemy action figures every every day, man. And I wanted these things to look exactly the way I saw them in my mind. And the best way to do that when it came to color was to work with uh, Pantone inks, man. PMS inks, man. You, you get a guide and then you denote the exact uh, colors that you want for each of these things, man. This would be something uh, you might hear it referred to as spot colors. Right. As, as opposed to process colors where colors are made based on mixing three colors or four colors, I guess, if you include black. As I understand it, the printer has to like re almost replace the CMYK with like an additional specific color 
that is like Pantone approved or something, right? So I had opportunity to use it a couple of times. Use it with each of these figures. And then I did this uh, skateboard deck for a local local shop here. We'll just like slide it through like this. Mind Cure Records is the shop's name. And I got to play with like three or four different colors. And you'd be astonished at the amount of black uh, Pantone swatches you could choose from, man. But uh, pink. And from our knowledge of comics, you could see that I could uh, use some dot textures man with the green just to almost like fake another color uh in this thing but these colors are the exact colors that i wanted to show up on the final design the resource that i used to get my colors was this book right here got it down at barnes and noble man pantone colors in the picture book kids section i think this is suggested for maybe three-year-olds <laughs> and i think the idea is for um Parents to create totally anal retentive <laughs> and obsessive young type A children, man. So you see the deal, man. Yellow, and then it has these variant, these variations of yellow with the basic Pantone number, man. So when the, you get a hold of those big swatch books of Pantone, they really can range from like 100 to 5. Like, they could cost as much as a PlayStation 4 these books, man. And I figured, you know what? I'm going to pick this up for $10 at the local Barnes and Noble and have 20 options for all the various colors. This is a great hack because it's so practical. And, and you're right. Those Pantone guides are very, very expensive and they fade over time. Like you have to replace them. You don't get a lifetime uh, Pantone <laughs> guide. So uh, here's the one downfall with the public when it came to the public enemy toys. Um, each of the members of public enemy has a different uh, brown skin skin tone like in in real life and i wanted to convey that in the action figure so i think i see where you're going with this yeah so when we <laughs> so when we get to the browns okay. it's not it's not too bad but none of these browns were were good enough for me so i actually had to well actually there were a few that i probably used in my career you know i used pantone four or five times maybe and every time i used it all that I needed was this little $10 book that you could get at any local Barnes & Noble, man. That's really great. One of the places uh, that I use Pantone is we did a second printing. Ad House Books did a second printing of Street Angel, Princess of Poverty. And it's printed in two colors. It's printed in like a pink, probably a little bit lighter than this, and then purple. And we had to specify the pink for the paper because when you print on what looked like colored paper, you're actually printing on white paper and you're basically covering that paper in ink. So that was one of the times that I used the Pantone colors. And I remember the, the printer, I believe, generated a few samples, you know, because there were pinks that we weren't sure about. And, you know, one of the problems with this system, in my opinion, is usually you have a swatch book where it's smaller than this. Your sample color is about half of that size. It's hard to imagine that as like a two-page spread or covering paper completely in that color. It looks a lot different. Same as anybody that's ever painted a room in their house. It's the same deal. You see that little swatch at the at the hardware store. It looks a lot different when it's on four walls. <laughs> so, you know, it, it, it's, it's a very expensive and precise system, but even still it has its ups and downs and, and really the more you work with it, the better uh, adjusted you get. You know, you might print lighter if it's going to have a lot of coverage, for example. I have a, um, another set. Like, I bought this book twice, and I cut out each of the mm -hmm. squares so that I can kind of, like, butt them up against each other and see what this, like, light blue would look like against this kind of um, maroon wine color of, of, of the hoodie there, man. So that's, like, another that's thing that thing. I recommend. Because if you just learn painting... There are weird blues in, in in flesh tone that are not obvious there, but when you see them married up against like the flesh color, like it just looks like normal shading. So our our eyes play a lot of tricks on us when it comes to putting colors together. And you might think certain things look good uh, up against one another, but uh, it's always best to color to changes it. whenever it's next to another color for sure. <laughs> So I just wanted to share that little Pantone hack, Jim, because we have a lot of professionals that come through our channel. They seem to really be digging our process posts. This is an all-inclusive channel, man, and we're making stuff for everybody in this little universe of ours, man. But we have comics that we have to draw, so we're going to get back to that, I think, man. You guys know what to do, man. Like, subscribe, and follow the YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon 
whenever you subscribe and it'll let you know whenever we have new videos available we usually post between uh, two or more per week you can find our cartoonist kayfabe read more comics read more manga merch at our spread shop there is a link in the description below this video so we're going to get back to it jim blew the spot but you guys know what your marching orders are read more comics <laughs>